Is uh, Timothy here? Yeah, great. All right. Um, how was your trip? Did you did it work out uh, well at the end? I obviously. Uh, well, I got stuck in um, uh, Copenhagen. They, nice put, they put us on the wrong bus. Okay. Uh, is there a mini? Oh, actually, no. I'm good. So. Thanks for being here. So um, yeah. let me introduce you briefly. So it's, it's the talk is about Git Annex recipes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Timothy has used Git Annex since 2017, so long time, for a variety of projects, from being a lab assistant at New York University pr uh, processing medical data, mm -hmm. to tele television production with PBS, Roku, for the television show This, this Old, Old House. House. Yeah. In this talk, he, he shares his recipes for scaling Git Annex use cases. Yeah, looking forward to that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I come from a um, a bit of a different background. I'm purely a software developer, and um, I've I've used Git Annex at a few of my jobs, and just generally to solve some of my problems. And so, I'm really uh, thankful to be here and and share some of this with all of you guys. And I hope you find it uh, interesting. So. Um, just as, uh, like from a system administration point of view, um, I've, I've tried to work around some of the pain points that I've had with Git Annex by just writing wrappers and, um, like I've never, I've never really been happy with, uh, transferring and I, I think that that's something that could probably be externalized a bit um, but what I ended up just doing in one case was writing a wrapper for git annex get and um, I've played around with different ways of using metadata for storing things like um, uh, how something when something should be transferred. Some of the stuff that I started working on, Joey ended up implementing later. Like, uh, I'll show you uh, further on in here, but um, just dealing with uh, dead keys and untracked content, stuff like that. Um, what else? One example of one thing that I did was uh, when I had to deal with large file sets, um, I was able to really optimize things by using better FS. Um, I would just make my git annex objects a sub uh, sub volume, and then if I wanted to, if I wanted to clone the entire thing, I would just use uh, better FS, and that way, that way you can just send it. So to be so, all right. Let me let me just. Uh, break this down a little bit more. With ZFS or better FS, you can um, take a subvolume in ZFS, there are data sets, and you can just send it over a pipe. And the file system driver will be responsible for verifying the integrity of everything, and it'll even preserve compression. So if you have uh, one of these newer file systems, and your data is in get annex uh, at rest, you can uh, take advantage of that by when you send it, if you, wanted, if you wanna move it to a different volume or a different machine. And also, um, I have this script git annex scrub. All it does is it just reads the file. And if it gets any kind of um, error, that means that there's a problem with the file. As long as the file's generation hasn't changed, then you can safely rely, you can safely assume that the file uh, on disk hasn't changed, and you can even um, oh, I don't know. It's not supposed to be extant; it's extant. But an extant is just an arbitrarily sized. Do you realize we don't see any slides? You said extant. Oh wait, what? <laughs> oh god, you haven't. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Oh, so I've been presenting the the whole. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I knew something would go wrong. Okay. Um, Sorry, I thought it was a long intro. <laughs> okay. Ah. It was just a snippet. Uh. 
progress. But yeah, uh, just a tip when, usually you should do it over SSH. And this is just an example on a closed network. I was doing it with Netcat and mBuffer is really important or at least pipe view, but you will sometimes have to know uh, outside information about how, um, how to optimize it. So here I'm, making, I'm forcing it to have a two gigabyte buffer and um, yeah, it's, it's quite useful. Um, and as I, that, as I like, wanted to deal with some of the issues uh, with Git NX, that's actually what encouraged me to explore some of these newer file systems. So maybe, maybe it would be good if there was some way to make trust level smarter or something like that. Like I, because I know that if it's on a machine where I'm having my file system handle integrity checking and stuff like that, then um, I can safely, I can have more, more or less confidence in it. Um, oh, and I, didn't, I, can, I can put links on my GitHub, but I experimented with integrating Git Annex into uh, Portage in, in Gentoo. Um, if you look at my overlay, my Portage overlay on my GitHub, I, I made uh, a few um, e-builds related to Git Annex. I made a Git Annex Bind one, which I don't even think matters anymore because Gentoo has been making that more available. But I also, I also tried um, extending the, um, I think it's Git. So I, I'm sorry if I'm going into like, if I'm drilling down too much into the technical stuff with this, but essentially I just would, I think it would be cool and I'm gonna continue working on this, trying to integrate Git NX functionality in places where it can be useful because I consider Git NX to, I treat it kind of like a format, right? So uh, we already have many cases where we have URLs, file names, checksums, uh, timestamps, and we already have a lot of tools which use these. And so just using Git NX can actually solve a lot of these problems for you. Like, uh, so, uh, in Gentoo, it you have uh, you have your dist files and you have ebuilds, which are descriptions of files with checksums and file names. And so you can very easily just convert all of that into an annex. It even comes with you can you can even have uh, keys for each different checksum type you want. Like if you want um, Blake or uh, what is it? Is it, is it is it just it's not called Blake? Is it it's Blake Seven? I think. Something like it's faster. You can do that very easily. So um, by and but also when I think about it as a format, it doesn't necessarily have to be a full implementation. Like I might just want to have um, just keys, and I don't need to have a UUID uh, log or a um, remotes log or anything like that. Let's just like go down. So, um, and these are just some of the projects that I've made that involve Git Annex. This is, this is something else, again, which I made like in 2019. Um, this is because my friends and I, would, we, we used to, we have a big Google Drive share. And well, we would only share like um, public domain content, Linux distros, Linux ISOs and stuff. And I can just navigate to this, we can go through it. It will let you, construct a, um, it's mostly based out of a make file, but it will, you, you just give it, you just feed it, assuming you're using R clone, you just feed it a uh, backend path and then the URL. And what it will do is uh, on the fly, construct a uh, git annex repo for you and it will also set the uh, web URLs to uh, an R clone web server that it starts running. So that way you can reserve it to everybody on the local network and you have this annex that you can just take with you which maps every single file in a Google Drive to, um, to, to an entry. So you can just say, if, if you see a uh, 
a Google Drive share, you just you could make an annex of a part of it or a subset of it, take it with you. And yeah, so that's one of my projects. How are we on time? Good. Good. Okay, good. Um, this is another one. This actually, I was, this unfortunately is an example of something where it kind of collapsed under its own weight. Uh, so it lost some of its momentum, but I think it's a good case study. So I think it was on Hacker News or something. Someone was, Microsoft used to offer these uh, pre-built virtual machines for testing. It was kind of useful. And I thought, here's another place where they're giving us MD5 hashes, file size names. And a lot, there's a lot of people in the public who are interested in knowing where to get them. Constantly you're seeing discussions on Reddit, everywhere else. Where do I find these? Where do I find them? People are passing them around. People are like, oh, I put some in Google Drive. I put some here. I put some there. Perfect application for Git Annex. And you can. And someone even already uh, started an ingestion script, but that's just up here. So uh, I just assembled a, a Git Annex repo around it. Um, one issue with a lot of my projects is I was accidentally leaking information, and so I went and I deleted the Git Annex branches. So. Um, and I had my, my .edu Google Drive share. I, I, I had so much crap in it. But this is, what I ended up doing was I just forked, because a gist is a, is a repo. So this actually starts out as just this guy, these guys talking about it. And I forked it, and I annexed it, and I externalized the actual files, and if you clone it, you could, in theory, I, well, it probably doesn't work anymore, but you could get Annex, get it, and you'll have the files properly checked. So that's, and, and, and I think stuff like that's cool. And um, I, also had, I also, a lot of FTP f f servers were disappearing, especially back in like 2018. And there's a format for um, uh, listing FTP servers, and it's not regular, it's not, I don't know, I guess it's just because of how the FTP protocol is. But with a bit of work, I was able to uh, make a converter for that too. And this is just one of the example um, projects. This is a, a, a site that hosted uh, Apple abandonware. And it's 1.3 terabytes, you know, it's, it's a repo. Um, and you know, it's, you've, you've all seen it get Annex repo, but it will, like the first step before I did anything else was creating the keys and the structure. And then I think in here it even shows it. You can break it. Uh, when, I, when I archive, when I mirror stuff, step one is to create the Annex, and then I can use the Annex as a queue. And you can even break that up among machines, among people. You can, you can create a branch and say, Anyone able to get these really big files, and you know they can push back from that. So, um, oh, also, this is another tool, and this was made using a really old version of it, which had really crummy uh, escaping. But uh, I made this tool called Store Touch, and it just creates a sequence of touch commands that'll let you restore the exact timestamps of a file. Um, this is this is before I did proper escaping. I I copied the style used by this tool, um, Git Meta uh, something. But it it's also a proper TSV file, so it's both executable, but it's very easy to parse. Let's see. We have anything else? Okay, cool. I did Red Hat Radio too. What? I have Red Hat Radio. Oh yeah, I forked that. Oh, you? Yeah, yeah, that's from Data Lad. That's an example from the uh, Data Lad ingestion scraping thing. Oh yeah, this is just another one. Um, this was something I actually really needed because I was working with some old mobile computers, and I got that just in time. Um, oh, yeah, this is what I was mentioning. No, it's the humble little helper script. But um, 
the time that something is committed, you know, isn't the same thing necessarily as um, the uh, m time of the file. Let's see what else. Oh, yeah, and um, again, like one of my bigger repos, which was just video files, I, I made this script. Uh, in, in my experience, it is faster sometimes to just, what it does is it just takes uh, a folder in your repo and it copies out all the keys and it, it just constructs an entirely new repo from what you have. And the reason that this is useful is because you can, I, I, call, I call it like a satellite repo. You can do what you want with it. You can put it even into an untrusted location if it's just pulling and ingesting, if it's just ingesting data and then pushing it somewhere and, up, and updating itself with information about where that is. And then because of how the merge driver works, it's very painless to just pull it back in. So that was the pattern that I used for quite a while. Um, like if there were any YouTube channels I liked, I was just continuously uh, mirroring them. And so I had this 37 gigabyte uh, Git NX mono repo. And uh, oh, yeah. So another utility that I like, I don't know how many of you have heard of it, it's called NCDU. Uh, it's, it's just a, it's a tool. Oh, I probably have it installed on here. Not the same screen. OK. <laughs> Um, but if you use it, it, it just it creates a um, it creates a uh, a listing of files and um, in a JSON like format. And for one thing, I I wrote a wrapper uh, or a Git Annex helper that just pipes the output of where it is directly into NCDU. Let me see if we can get the terminal up here, which is actually pretty helpful. And, and I'm going to bring a terminal up so I can just demonstrate it. But um, And the other thing that I, I listed in the abstract was fully leveraging uh, BUP, which is very similar to Borg. And it, I should probably use Borg. BUP is just what I started with. And it just lets you make different, it lets you take sets of files which are very similar to each other. And it uses Git, and it makes pack files. And so you can really leverage differential compression with it. And the way that I combined it with Git Annex, I mean, besides the fact that, um, it has the same limitation as Git, which is that there's no way to tell where something is. It, it is either there or it isn't. Uh, so I, I monitor servers, and I, I have NCDU generating snapshots for me continuously, and they're very similar to each other. And if I just tracked the pack files themselves, it would just get bigger and bigger. Uh, so you can seamlessly divide them up by category, like by year or whatever, and then re, uh, regenerate the pack files. And they're all associated with each other. So I'm, I, I can go into detail about any of this stuff. Or, but yeah, that's, that's where I am. Um, I think there's a lot of really cool stuff that can be done with Git Annex. And um, Yeah, and it's it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe there are direct questions on anything, Alex. So um, for the portage disk files, I mean, uh, it's not like you created an e builds to uh, for Git Annex itself, but I'm not sure if I completely understood. What oh. you were talking about. So I think it, I think what you were saying is that you wanted to have like you would, you would emerge something to install it, but then you'd have Git Annex end up pulling down the assets that were necessary in order to be able to compile and install yeah. something. Yeah, I, I did a couple of things. I created a help. I you can have it so that it, you can use whatever uh, program you want to fetch something. So I had a wrapper for Git Annex, and my dist files folder is actually a repo, so it will implicitly cache it. But um, 
Also, there is an E class in, in Portage, which, you know, when you have, if you use Gen 2, there's a dash 999 E builds. Those actually do Git clone. I started modifying that to do what you said, to see if it could use Git Annex to fetch something instead. And so I, it, that was quite a rabbit hole. I don't know if it's realistic that any of that uh, be finished, but it would be cool. Did, uh, was there any uptake on it? Did like, was anybody else using this as well or, uh, or just a hobby? No, so just me. Okay. <laughs> I, I think it's a cool idea. So. Uh, you can, uh, a lot of this is on GitHub and I'll make sure to put anything else up there. But yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah? Oh. Just, oh. Just quick one. And so the transfer of bit betterfs, first of all, betterfs or zfs, what is the choice? Let, first let, of all, I, someone tell me, it, I call it btrfs in my head. I never talk to people about it. Some people say it's betterfs, some yeah. people call it butterfs. If anyone has a preference here, I've, I, I'm saying betterfs. Me too. Uh, yeah. Oh, but ZFS, every time I talk about it, people are like, but ZFS is better, and I'm sure it is. I just haven't had a chance to try it yet. Um, and BetterFS works out of the box on Linux, and it also is a much lower learning curve. It's, you can use it exactly the same as you do EXT4, but you can also start using the more advanced copy on write features and stuff like that. So it might be a better choice for you if you want a more advanced file system and can't commit to learning uh, ZFS right now. Um, oh, by the way, if you look on my overlay on my uh, GitHub, you should be able to see in one of those branches uh, some of my experiments with um, the in integration of Git Annex with Portage. Okay. All right. Let's um, give a round of applause for Timothy to show us that we have to move on.